So for the last part of this Substance Designer tutorial, I want to stitch all those three different um, textures together and create one uber texture. So to do that, I want to create a new Substance Graph. A new Substance Graph, and this one will be called Hydrant, which will be the, all these ones combined together. So um, what you can do now, uh, you can actually drag those textures in here and it, you will see that you get the shader of all the outputs right here. Currently this is 4K because of our geometric textures. So uh, we just leave it as at that and we bring in the other ones as well. So we've got alloy which is our base metal. So these are the two metals. And then we have our paint which is this guy here. And the first thing what I want to do is make use of the color ID geometric map to uh, differentiate between alloy and brass. And the first thing to set it up is to go to the other, to one of the other shaders and copy the geo maps. So let's head over back, uh, let's head back over to the hydrant, paste them in here and we should get the geometric textures which we baked in the part one of the series. And then we should have the color ID right here at the bottom. So first let's try to connect these guys up. And to do so, uh, we create a blend like this. And let's say the bottom is, um, oh, how do, now comes the tricky part. You cannot, well, I guess there's a shader combiner. Let's see, or whatever it's com called. I actually, I, I did it on a different route previously. So let's see if there is a, way to combine them. Uh, mesh data, material selector, I think that's interesting. How does that work? This one likes to get the color ID. And how does this one work? Material 1 is this one. True. Let's see. I'm not so sure how it works. Uh, let's just, we will have two materials. Material selector, color picker, material one, material two. <clears throat> so the color ID we have, so this is this guy, right? So let's connect the color ID right here. And then we get a mask directly. So this is color ID one or color ID two. And enable. So I'm not so sure. Let's just do this. True. So we get the one mask, which is cool. I'm not sure what the other one does. Anyways, it's not that important. So we just have one mask which we can invert, right? So let's say we would just want to connect the, the base colors. Well, let's first see if there's, I, I'm pretty sure there should be something as a mesh, like a shader, combiner, mesh data, ma material selector. So this is, gets better mask, that's what I did. Yes, that's what I did. Mesh data blender, let's mix data from mesh baked. What is that? Oh no, that's also something different. Anyways, so let's first connect the base colors. So the alloy goes to the bottom, uh, like this, and the brass goes to the top. And it is blended by the mask, which connects here, and this one is our base color. Okay, so it's um, the other way around. So we can just switch the inputs. So this one goes to the bottom, this one goes to the top. And now we have the alloy at the base and the brass at the tips, which is what we want. Right. <clears throat> okay, so we can actually use the color ID from this one just to make it more streamlined. This is the mask frame, add frame, mask. So if anyone knows how to um, blend shaders directly together, let me know. I'm pretty sure there is a way. I just did not research how it works. So I'm doing a different way. I will connect all these outputs again and reroute them through the output maps right here. Okay, so this is our base color. And now we need to do this for all the other ones as well, right? So we will duplicate this one time. Like we need this five times, I guess. So three, four, 
five. It can get messy this way, but anyways, let's just do it like this. So the top one is the alloy. So we connect the first, the top, and then this one here. Then we go to the next, which is roughness top, roughness bottom, and then we have thing metallic top, metallic bottom, and height top, and height bottom. And now let's connect these guys up. So is that the normal? Yeah. So normal to normal. And these guys connect up as this. Okay. <clears throat> so this should be our base. So let's see uh, how this looks in a nicer resolution. Let's go up to 2K and see what we get. It takes a while to compute. Hmm. One map created 4K, so it's slowly doing its job. Okay, I think it should be done now. So this is now what we got. We have have the brass at the top, and then we have um, I think this is too too dull, so we need to add more shininess to this. So um, ideally, we would just be able to control it right from here. So what we need to do is to expose certain values just to have more options to um, change the shaders um, afterwards. So let's head back over to um, our alloy and find a way to change our roughness map. So let's create a levels here and um, let's go to values and I think all we need to do is be able to change the how um, the out high color. So let's see what would happen if I would uh, move this down. We should get more shiny. If I move this up, we should get m more dull, right? So this should be something we need to um, expose. And I'm not sure exactly. Oh, there it is. Expose this guy. Input name. Select the name of the new input. So let's call this one uh, roughness alloy or just yeah, let's just call this roughness. <clears throat> okay, so now we should have. I haven't tried this out before, so let's just see. Level out loud. So now we should have somewhere this parameter on the shader, I guess. It should be hopefully. Um, here it is, roughness. This goes to roughness. Let's see how if it is actually in the hydrant on this guy. There it is. So here's a roughness value, which the one I just expo exposed, I guess. So if I change the, the value now here, you can see that it should be updating the roughness in the alloy too. There we go. So now we have a super shiny metal, right? And this is just by exposing the value in the previous shader. And then we have the roughness control right here. So let's just, uh, the default is one, which is uh, what we had, which, which was the dull version. And it always needs to recalculate the shading networks. Okay, so let's just dial it down a bit more. Let's just try 0.8. Now let's see what we get here. Okay, so it's getting more shiny. Let's go a bit more shiny. And then I think we're good to go. Okay. So the next thing is to bring in the paint, right? So we have now um, the metals combined. And now we want to actually create the paint coating, which is almost everywhere, right? The paint um, is going over all these objects. As you can see it's actually it's mostly paint. And then there is metal coming through. And then there is some on here as well. So let's do the same procedure and blend them again, but this time with the paint. So first, let's just create a normal blend, BLD, and the bottom is uh, the metals. Let's do just do that, and the foreground is the paint, right? And before we start, I, I just like to stop this the engine so we just have faster iterations and we don't need to wait all the time. But we won't get updates. So be, um, I'll let me just do this quickly and then you see how this works. So let's just blend node and normal goes to the bottom. 
like this and this one is also the normal and then I connect right up here another blend and currently we don't have a opacity map which will change so this guy goes here and we create another blend BLD um, bottom metallic is that the one I used yeah metallic metallic and one more and this one is I guess the height map and this one connects here and then this one goes right here so now we have our paint blend and let's just move these guys over and frame them and call this paint blend and this is the shaders so move these guys over and this is our metal blend metal blend there we go so move this guy up and maybe add a bit more alpha channel more saturation very nice so we have blended metals and now we have paint uh, blended the paint so I would expect everything to be red now because we did not um, add any uh, opacity maps so let's see there we go so the paint is fully on top you can see everything is working as expected so let's let's just use a dust um, a dust mask just to see how how it will look so let's go to library uh, minimize this one go to mask generators um, should we just use dirt I th I've seen some paint thing somewhere paint where but this is a thing which goes on top so let's keep that in mind that it is there but not let's just not use it right now <clears throat> and always if you have any questions just post them below I, I'll read through them and I'll most of the times I'll answer so let's bring in the dirt and press 3 to connect the mesh input so that's connected and this is now our paint dirt combiner so let's hook up the masks um, but before we do so um, instead of going from here to all the outputs now I want to just create a levels in between this so we just have one connection to worry about like if we want to do any changes it would happen in here so these are the shaders so they can actually go well they could go in, in this line but then there are too many noodles so let's just leave them here and now let's just quickly connect those maps this one goes here this one goes there this one goes here <clears throat> and I hope it makes sense because um, I have three different shaders they all have three different normal maps different roughness maps and all these kind of things and I need to blend them together using different operations so this is now what we get with just using this dust effect or dirt is it called dirt I think dirt so it's already pretty good, right? You can see the paint is here, you can see the paint is there, but it is a soft fall off. And paint is not falling off, it's chipping off, so you have hard edges like you would see in the reference images, like these hard edges of paint um, falling off. You can see that there's some nice bump which we could introduce. So first, let's see how we can achieve that. And I think if we just increase the contrast, we should get a pretty good result. So let's bring it very high. So contrast means it's black and white, so there's no in between. So, wow, this is actually pretty cool, right? So we have this nice fall off already just by doing adding contrast, and this is actually pretty far along already. You can see the paint was around this this uh, notch there, and it it goes around here based on occlusion. It's it's there and around here. So um, let's add more grunge to this whole thing so to break it up even more so now it's it's getting somewhere you can see the pain in the front here it's actually already very good and I'm not so sure what else we can do now I think the only thing is we could break this guy up a bit more so we don't want to um, change anything on the brass well it's let's just play a bit more with the grunge and add more edge masking should uh, give more edges here some more breakup add more grunge and okay that's interesting as well so now it's fully lit up but now we can actually bring down the dirt a bit and let's see what we get 
and remember we're working in 2k resolution now so it is it takes a while to compute but it's a very high detailed result already okay so I'm, I'm pretty happy with the brass right you get these chips of pain which we also get on um, on here so there's these chips of pain which we have right here as well um, but I want to have a different dirt map for the alloy because this one is too too uniform and we need more chips here but this one is pretty cool so uh, what I can do now I can use one map for just the brass and the other one just for the alloy and to do that I will use the color ID and I will duplicate this dirt dirt 1 and dirt 2 so this one is the alloy and this one is the brass and now I need to blend them together so let's create a blend node and the one is the bottom, one is the top, and this one is the output. And now we just need to control this map using our color ID. So there is this utility um, material selector, which we just, uh, can we just reuse that? I think so. Let's just use this guy. So move them a bit over, make this bigger. And just use this mask to connect right here. Come on. Doesn't like it. Maybe it's because of these one, two, three mesh buttons. So I just pressed one. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Now it works. And now we have a different dirt for one of these guys. Let's see which one is which. So I'm just changing the seed value now to four, and we will see which one changes. So that's exactly what we want. So the top one is the paint and the bottom one is the brass. So I like the brass, so we, I'm not sure if you can actually name them. Can you actually name them? Hmm. Create, expose. There's this this thing. Let's see what this is. Comment. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's just add this as the brass. Okay, well, that's what it is. Anyways, okay, so let's play around with the paint a bit more. So this is the dirt for the paint, and let's um, reduce. Oh, let's uh, let's reduce the dirt level a bit. So we should see more metal coming through. This was, I guess, too much. So this is something we need to dial in slowly. Okay, so it's creeping in. Let's reduce the contrast a tiny bit and add more grunge. Let's see what we get now. Okay, I think we need to increase the levels a bit more. How does the reference look? So, um, okay, it's actually pretty similar. Like, we have more paint than we have metal, and this is actually almost what we get. So, we have metal here. Um, yeah, I think the only thing which is missing is like a bump. So, um, let's use. <clears throat> the bump from this levels guy, right? It's because this one is blending blending the paint and the metal. So what we can do now, we can go right in here and we can create another bump map. So let's create a Sobel, Sobel normal and use this guy with this high contrast. And you can see we get these hard edges, which are the um, paint flakes. And let's move this node <clears throat> to our normal slot, which is here. And let's combine two different normal maps. So normal combine and A and map B. And this one goes to this guy. So now we should see something. That's a cool. So we should, we're seeing now this edge around the paint which is obviously too strong, but it's a nice effect, right? So it see it looks like the paint is a bit thicker, like has a some uh, some thickness to it. So let's uh, just reduce the amount of the intensity. Uh, let's, let's just reduce the intensity. So there we go. Reducing a bit a bit more, and now you can see there's this nice edge around the paint, which looks very cool. And um, so there's not much more to it I guess than what we did now uh, let's just first see how uh, it looks with the iRay ray tracer 
let's boot this guy up. So these leaks are pretty nice. Uh, it might be that the bump map is a bit strong because you don't really see a bump right here, right? So let's just bring it down by half or a bit more than half. And let's make this view bigger. All right, so let's uh, let this computer, but then I will talk about a few things. So you can see that there is missing detail in uh, the metal. So we could add a high frequency noise to this. I really like the look of the brass. It's very detailed compared to my um, first first pass. Uh, let's just bring this one up. So this was my first iteration, which I did a few days ago. If I would if this animation would stop. So this is what I did before. <clears throat> and I think the new result looks way better, especially the brass. Only there's, um, here's more detail. So there's a high frequency bump map in the alloy, which we don't have. But all the rest looks way nicer, I think, like these drips, which we don't have here. And the detail on the, on the text looks pretty awesome. Um, so what we can do now, we can increase, or like we can introduce a high frequency noise right here. Uh, but before we do that, let's just dock this guy back in here and minimize. And we need to change the resolution to go up to 4K, right? Just to see the final effect. Um, before we do that, open GL and let's head over to the alloy quickly and adjust and bring in a high frequency bump map. Just to make it a bit more interesting and polished. So bump map is right here. We already have a few maps connected to this. So view outputs in 3D. Sometimes you need to do that to update it. It's not as fast if you have lots of uh, shader graphs. Is this actually on? It should be, yeah, it is on. So as you can see, nothing is happening now. Um, we are in alloy. Let's just try to disconnect and reconnect. Maybe it does update. Um, yeah, what's going on? Uh, let's change resolution. Maybe this will trigger an update. <coughs> hmm. Something happening, not really. Yeah, so this is sometimes pretty weird. I'm not sure what to do then. Oh, there we go. It, it just takes a while to to update everything. So we are now in, let's go up to 1K. Okay, there we go, 1K. And you can see actually that this graph is referenced by a different graph. So it means that whatever change you do here is being changed in the main shader as well, which is very good. And I that's exactly what I wanted to do. So let's just introduce a high frequency bump map. So we create a, um, a normal combine this one and we combine this map with this map and then we create a fractal of something interesting uh, where is that dirt 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 fractal sum fur they've got so many interesting shapes here grunge maps there's so many things to choose from scratch is also interesting okay um, fractal sum base Let's just use this one and see what detail we get. So something is broken. Normal map combined. Okay, this one is this one needs to go into a Sobel first. Okay, and this one goes here. That's better. So now we need to um, add more. Uh, like, sorry, we need to increase the resolution. So let's add a transform. There we go. And let's reduce the uh, resolution by two, by another two. So now we're adding more detail. Um, did it actually do anything? It did not seem to update it right here. Um, but it is definitely changing. Let's hit over to iRay to see how it looks right here. Interesting that we don't get um, a more detailed bump map. So let's go to 2K in here. It takes a while now to compute again. Might be that we need to use a different uh, noise pattern. 
maybe this fractal here. Um, it's still computing the 2K resolution. <clears throat> there we go. Um, nothing really changed, honestly. There we go. Now there's an update. So this is actually, it is actually pretty good. It might just be too strong. So let's bring that down by half. It should be very subtle. And I think this is actually looking better now. Okay, so I'm saving again. And let's head over to to um, our main shader, the hydrant, which is all three combined. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully this does update now. It did. Not Not properly, though. The paint is metallic paint now. So we're still missing the translation of the metallic. So we just have roughness and base so far. And apparently some normal map too. Uh, let's just head over to OpenGL and let's change it to 4K. Okay, now that we have the 4K masks or textures, you can actually see this nice detail we get here. So the the alloy is it might be now a bit too bumpy, but this is now preference. So what you could do now is you can either tweak the normal maps or um, I don't know, go back and change roughness or whatever you want to do. But um, I think it shows pretty much what you can do with this nice software package. So I just want to show you a few more tweaks which you can actually do with the OpenGL with the iRay renderer. So let's make this guy full screen or a bit bigger. There's maybe a shortcut to to view directly full screen. I did not find it just yet. So this is the OpenGL. Let's just frame it pretty nicely. Um, hard to tell which what we should do. Let's just use this something like this. And let's switch to iRay. There we go. So as you can see at the bottom here, you see iterations and you have time. And if you go to um, render and edit, you have the option to control how many samples it should shoot until it's uh, resolved, or you can say the maximum time it should take until it is resolved. So you can have either like one second and then it's stopped rendering and you can continue working, or you can define the samples. So I like uh, 500 samples, Is it might be a bit high, um, but it gives it a very clean result. And we are at 100 samples now, and you can see the metal is a bit strong in, in the bump. Um, but let's just stick with that. It's it's a rough surface, and there's a nice paint coating, whatever. What I really like is the detail we get on these uh, on the on the font here, like these nice. Um, there's some chip paint of the uh, S and then the P, and even here, this detail is is pretty cool. So um, what can you do more? So if you can, if you go to the camera and go edit selected camera, at the bottom you have um, post effects. Um, you might know these things from Maxwell, or I think V-Ray has them. These are like after-render tweaks. So what you can do, you can enable them. I'm not sure if it will go with, while it's rendering. No, I don't think so. So we can actually just wait a bit more until it's resolved. It's 400 now. It should go a bit faster now. It's 420. Um, but just keep in mind what we did here. We actually just used procedurals to create this very realistic looking shader or texture for now. And we can export them and use them in Arnold. And I will show you how to export them properly. So this is now resolved. And let's bring in the post effects. And in here you can actually color correct the whole image. So you can desaturate it, um, add more contrast, reduce contrast do these things or you can actually add some glare which is um, unity does that pretty nice you can see what's going on here if the sun is reflecting you see this nice glare and you can reduce the threshold to just um, mimic the sun reflection or something what you want to do here luminance is the intensity of the glare so this looks pretty cool um, on off this is what it's doing we just brightening this spot up so these are a few things you can do you can add vignetting which is uh, off on default so you can um, FOV dependence not sure what that is that's field of view dependence and then you have the intensity which doesn't seem to do anything 
Um, what else? Light shot. I'm not sure what these all these guys do, but you have a few controls. Is vignetting now on? No. Yeah, so that is uh, these post effects. You can enable, disable them, and you see it's actually blurring the image a bit if it's on. So this is off, this is on, and you can see there's actually a lot going on here. So let's just keep it raw. And I will show you now. Let's for, let's first uh, export this image. I actually don't know if you can do this from here. Pause rendering. Scene. I don't know. So what I just did last time was doing snipping tool. Just grabbing this quickly. It's definitely not the best way, but this is my result. Uh, let's just save this. And this is the training pass. Training. Which, in my opinion, looks better than what I did previously. And uh, let's just dock this guy down here again. And now I will show you how to export them. So OpenGL. And hit save. And what you can do now, you can actually go to right click on, on, the, tech, on um, the graph which you want to export. And then you have export outputs as bitmaps. And what I like to work with is an EXR, which is a, um, a high dynamic range. It goes up to 32 bits. So for textures, normally it's fine to just go uh, from 0 to 1 in, in value uh, and not have high dynamic ranges. Um, but I just, out of habit, it's everything is EXR and then it's how it is. So destination, let's choose substance designer let's go to the maya folder and let's go to source images so this is my maya base folder and then you have the option to add some um, tokens so this is currently called hydrant base color um, and now you can add a few more options to this um, you can actually um, where is that index usages graph not sure where you can find them anymore um, anyways, if I save all now, it will export at, at my working resolution as far as I know. So let's see what's going on. Let's actually, if it did export them now, let's see. So something is happening. Base color, let's see how they look in RV, double click. And this is the base color. And I think if I press I for information, this is 4K working resolution, 16 bits. So let's bring in the other ones. Uh, okay. So this is the normal map. I'm not sure, I guess height. This is the metallic normal map. This might be the height and the other one was roughness or something. So. We have the maps exported, pretty simple, right? And you get a pretty nice detailed map. And you can see that there's lots of quality and detail in it. Our leak map looks pretty weird, so I guess we could change this, the leak map to make it more interesting, more appealing. Uh, what else is there to see? Normal map is pretty cool. And in the next part, I will show you how you can connect these maps to your Arnold standard surface shader and create some interesting rendering. I will maybe also um, create a quick brick map from designer just to make the render a bit more interesting. Um, so I hope you did enjoy this substance designer course or this, I think, three part um, designer tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, always feel free to. Um, leave the comments below and don't forget to uh, give me a thumbs up and if you have not subscribed to this channel it helps me um, to output more content and you will get actually notified if I have live sessions which lots of you people like uh, to watch and learn something so again um, thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next session which will be the uh, Maya Arnold part where we will connect those output textures into the new standard surface shader. So thank you guys for tuning in. See you in the next one.